Hello, it's Tuesday, so that means it's time for another quick Maya Q&A. This week, Sanjeev Talukdar, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, asks, Sir, can I ask you one question? Why is this diffuse pass containing shadows? I have the same problem. Can you help? Now, it's true that shadows will appear in both the beauty and the standard diffuse pass. If you want to find a way of taking shadows out of a specific AOV to composite them later on, you'll have to use some render layers using the render setup window, which has been a part of Maya since version 2017. When we're getting ready to render, always remember to go to File, Set Project to make sure that you can find your rendered images easily. I'm going to make a simple scene with Kayla using an HDR image as my background. I'll do this by going to Arnold Lights Sky Dome Light and choosing an HDR image as the color. I'll also make sure to change the color space from sRGB to RAW. I'll frame my camera and spend a lot of time deciding which is the best orientation for the background by orientating the light in the y-axis. I'll make a quick test render and I'll see that I'm working in the beauty layer, but this setup will also work for the diffuse. Now I've made earlier a directional light for the scene to create a sharper shadow and I can turn off the shadow of the sky dome light by selecting the light and turning the option of cast shadows off. To capture the shadows below Kayla I need some form of geometry so I've made a simple ground plane but this will also work with any more complex 3D environments you may have. As I go working, I want to have the Arnold render window and the render layer setup window available to me to make my adjustments. To make it easier for this video, I've made a quick layout so that you can see all the relevant screens at the same time. So I'll click this button and I'll make my first render layer, and I'll call it Kayla Geo. Then I'll right click the layer and make a collection called Geo No Shadow. I have to add Kayla's geometry to this collection by dragging it from the outliner and placing it here. If I press the eye icon, it will display the current layer in my viewport, and when I render, you can see that only Kayla appears. The background is a part of the lights, and Arnold will assume that you want the same light setup as the scene, unless you tell it to do otherwise. To render a separate image with only the shadows, I'll create a second layer and call it Shadow Matte. Here I'll also create a new collection called Only Shadows Geo, and I will place both Kayla and the ground plane into this collection. We're going to use a shadow map material to override the current textures being used in the scene and render only out the shadows. To do this, I'll right click on the collection, choose Create Shader Override, and then I'll open the Hypershade. Looking through the Arnold shaders, I'll type AI Shadow Matte, and I will select the name of the current shader, and I'll copy and paste it into the Override section inside of our render setup. Now when I press render, the image will be mostly transparent and will display only the shadows. This effect is much easier to see if we look at the alpha channel. One more step to go, and that is to remove any self-casting shadows on Kayla's geometry. I'll add another collection to Kayla Geo and add in any lights that are inside my scene. As this scene is quite simple, I'm only going to add the directional light and I'll select it in the attribute editor and scroll down to the Arnold tab and look for cast shadows. Now if I turn off cast shadows now, I'll remove the shadows for the entire scene as we did earlier. However, if I right click this option and choose create attribute override for visible layer, the text will now highlight orange and it will show me that this feature I can turn on and off only for the selected render layer. If I zoom into Kayla's chest, you can now see the shadows disappear. Now I can set up my render settings and choose how I want to export my images. In this case, I just want to use an EXR or I can use any other format that supports an alpha channel. I'll render out my scene and when Arnold has finished making those pretty pixels, I will have two images on my hard drive following the naming convention of my render layers. If we have a look at the images in Photoshop, we can see that we have the Kayla geometry layer and we also have the separate shadows which can be just placed on top of the geometry thanks to the alpha channel. Customizing how your shadows look is now really easy by using the layer opacity, any blending modes and you can even do color corrections as well. So that's a quick look at how to create your own shadow layers. 
Thanks very much to Sanjeev for his question. And if you'd like to take part and ask a question, you can send me a line in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and hit the notification button if you want to know when I'm releasing my latest videos. And I'll be publishing more Maya Q&As every Tuesday. And if you want to find out more ways of how to support me as a creator, then check the comment section below. Keep those questions coming. And as always, keep learning, stay strong, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.